In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create depth in your portraits and modeling shots when you're working in a studio setting with solid color backgrounds. Hey gang, my name is Joe Edelman, and my mission is to help photographers like you to develop a solid understanding of the hows and whys behind great photography so that you can achieve your goals as a photographer. Solid color backgrounds are great when shooting people because they let you isolate your subject, and since they come in different colors, they're very versatile if you have enough money to buy every color. I already showed you that gray is the most versatile color because you can turn it into any color with gels on your flash or strobe. But even with all the possible combinations of colored backgrounds and gels, sometimes you're going to want a little bit more. You know, a little something to jazz up that background and create some depth. New photographers are taught that especially with a dark background, you should separate your subject from the background visually with a rim light or hair light so that you don't wind up with a floating head. This too is a great technique, but it is just one more tool that you have to jazz up your backgrounds, and indeed, sometimes you want something a little more. Another simple trick is to actually place an object or some kind of material between your subject and the background to create the feeling of depth. While this works, you do need to be careful that you aren't making your shot too busy and stealing attention from your subject. One of my favorite tricks is to use water and a black seamless paper background. Get a spray bottle like this one that you can order on Amazon or find at a hardware store or even sometimes at a dollar store. The bigger the better because you do want the spray to travel. Next, fill the bottle with water. I would recommend placing some old towels on the floor, especially if you don't have a dedicated studio and you're shooting in your house. Set up a flash behind your subject aimed back towards the camera. This technique works with speed lights pocket flashes, and studio strobes like the Interfit Honey Badgers that you see here. I generally place my strobes low and aimed up towards my subject's head. You can experiment with different placements to get different looks, even including the flash in your photo if you like it. Now you'll need an assistant, or of course, you can use a wireless remote control and place your camera on a tripod. Compose your shot, get your subject set up the way you want them, and begin spraying the water, and then shoot. This is where some of you want to ask, how powerful should the backlight be? It's completely up to you, and it will depend on the color gel that you're using. Here's a shot that I did during a live demonstration in Las Vegas with no gel, and the backlight was dialed up to almost full power. Here's the same setup with the flash turned down to just below half power. Experiment. There is no right or wrong. It is a matter of what looks best to you. Now the same goes with color, with the flash turned up and the flash turned down. The possibilities are endless. I should also point out to you that the closer the spray is to the model, the more detail and shape you'll see in the water drops. The further the spray is from the model, the more the drops soften and blend together. This is an effect that is controlled by depth of field. Here is a shot done in a gray background instead of black, and here is the same setup with an orange gel added to the mix. The key word is experiment. Try using a wide spray path. Try using a narrow spray path. Try shooting as the last bit of the spray is falling out of the frame. Try using a strobe aimed at your black background with one color gel, and then a second strobe aimed back towards your camera with a different color gel for the water. The possibilities are really only limited by your imagination. Okay, so I promised you three tricks, so I still owe you two more. If you don't want to spray water or don't have a spray bottle handy, hairspray works really well. <laughs> Cheaper, the better. I use Aquanet because you can get a big can for less than $3. I still recommend covering the floor with towels or even a cheap plastic paint drop cloth that you can just dispose of after your shoot. And the third trick is to use spray smoke. You can purchase this online for about $12 per can and it works much better than an actual smoke machine. The product name is Atmosphere Aerosol and while it's non-toxic, non-irritating, and ozone safe, it is listed as extremely flammable, and you should not use it in an enclosed space near a heater or open flame. A single 8-ounce can goes a long way with a little practice and can give you lots of options. If you have access to a smoke machine, that is definitely an option, but my experience has been that smoke machines tend to put out a lot of smoke very quickly, and it's much harder to control than the atmosphere aerosol. I know, I said three tricks, but hey, good photographers underpromise and overdeliver. So remember that plastic drop cloth that I mentioned as an alternative for the towels to catch your water? 
Plastic drop cloths do cool things with light when you place them between your subject and your background. And depending on your placement and depth of field and color gels, you can create a ton of variations. I'll show you more of that one in a future video. As always, I hope this gives you some ideas, so please take this idea and run with it. Go practice and show me what you come up with. Until next time, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss any videos. And hey, don't keep all this cool stuff to yourself. Please share it with your photography friends. Remember, photography is not a competition. It's a passion to be shared. Now go pick up that camera and shoot something because your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.